Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Before we get started, I want to give you a little sneak peek at my upcoming book, The Drawing Lesson. It comes out July 5th, and uh, this is original artwork here. It is a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw. The main character uh, you see here, his name is David. He's a young boy who sort of uh, forces this woman into becoming his art mentor. And uh, as he gets the lessons, you get the lessons. Uh, by reading the book. I'll probably talk a little more about it later on, but let me go ahead and give you a little sneak preview of the art. So there you have it, the drawing lesson coming out July 5th. I've put a link in the uh, description for uh, pre-orders. Uh, any of you who want to pre-order this book, support me that way. I thank you very much uh, in advance. But otherwise, let's go ahead and get on with this video. I have a concept for a two-part video today. It's going to be an action sequence. Uh, I want to draw a guy who's like running away from a monster. And this week we're going to draw the guy running away. Next week we're going to draw the monster. So let's get started with a few basic guidelines. So I've drawn the guy's head, it's a little bit in a three-quarter point of view, and this is the line for basically his spine. And uh, what I've done here is to pull the camera way back so that you can see how much space remains over here. Some people like to follow along with these lessons, and uh, if you're one of those people, you want to make sure you leave a lot of space over here uh, for the monster. But for now, I want to zoom in a little closer so that you can see uh, the lines that I'm putting down for the uh, figure. All right, so we've zoomed in a little closer, and now I'm going to draw the basic guidelines for the legs. So I've decided to use quite a cartoony approach. That's why the head is so big in proportion to the body. If you would like to make it a little more realistic, you're going to want to uh, either reduce the size of the head or enlarge the size of the body to make it uh, more proportional. But hopefully you'll enjoy this kind of light-hearted approach that I'm using to this subject. Well, note the angle, the extreme angle of this one leg and how high up the foot is in the air, completely straight the other leg. Um, a classic running pose, so those of you who are trying to learn uh, that pose. And indeed, uh, this video sort of serves as a video on how to draw a running pose. And to finish it off, of course, we need to draw the arms. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so you can see how one arm is going up. It's nearly at a right angle. I suppose that's a little less than a right angle. And then over here, um, at least the way it looks on the page, considerably tighter than a right angle at the elbow there. Um, notice how large this hand is. I'm using a sort of a forced perspective, pushing this hand back, bringing this one forward in a pretty exaggerated way, I must say. But again, it's all part of this cartoony approach I'm using. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to get the sort of crosshairs here for his eyes and nose. And then we're going to get into some real-time drawing. So as I said, a three-quarter point of view, that means getting the central line pretty far over to the side. And then right between the top and the bottom of the head is a line for uh, the eyes. And as I promised, it's time to start doing some real-time drawing. I want to try to get the entire pose uh, in place all in real time. And I know some people uh, will be pleased by that news. I'm going to begin by putting in a uh, couple of... Uh, dots for the pupils. And you can see how they rest upon this upper line. Now, um, as I've uh, said from the beginning, this is a fairly cartoony approach that I'm using here. So you're not going to see me worrying too much about human anatomy, especially in the area of the face here. I'm going to leave these lines so that they show through a little bit, but I, I want to do sort of like classic cartoony eyes. He's looking back at the you know monster that's going to be chasing him. And so I'm making them just kind of ridiculously large. I don't often do super cartoony drawings. I guess I do these um, chibi-style drawings. 
And uh, I suppose some people might say that this reminds them of a chibi. I'm certainly not trying to draw a chibi. It's a little more like uh, American style this week. Um, in keeping with uh, the um, drawing lesson previews that I showed you, in fact, I want to try to do the coloring so that it simulates the coloring I used uh, in the drawing lesson. I've put the eyebrows up pretty high above the eyes so as to uh, give him that, you know, on alert <laughs> kind of look. Just a little dot here for the nose. And uh, I want to have his uh, mouth pretty wide open. I suppose this part might uh, owe something to Japanese uh, style cartoon cartooning. Uh, the shape of the mouth, a little hard to describe, but I, some, I sometimes see this shape on uh, chibi characters and so forth. And that, of course, makes him look like he's panicked as well he should be when next week we draw the gigantic monster lumbering after him. I'm going to put in a few uh, guidelines for the hair, so I'm going to start erase sort of the top of the scalp here. Goodbye, scalp. We won't be needing you anymore. Uh, and uh, I'm not going to get too much into the details, but just a few strands of uh, hair shooting off in all directions. All directions, Curly. Really? Every single direction? Are they painting, pointing straight toward me? <laughs> I guess I could try to arrange that. Anyway, you do, uh, when drawing hair like this, uh, especially in an action pose, you want to make full. Uh, use of it in terms of revealing the action. He's running uh, from right to left, so the strands of hair should mostly be pointing off uh, toward the right, giving us this sense of, you know, the velocity, the wind uh, blowing his hair back. That doesn't mean, though, that you don't see any hairs uh, off uh, here in the front. I want to get at least a few. So as to finish it off, give him an ear. Don't want to forget the ear. Don't forget the blushies. I know everyone's saying, draw the blushies. <laughs> I suppose I could draw some blushies. Let's hold off on those. As is my tradition. Always drop them in at the end. Okay, so we've got the basics of the hair, the head, and so forth. Keeping it kind of loose so that I can refine things later. And let's begin by, well, I'm going to start with this arm that's a little closer to us. Again, I'm going to lighten up the uh, guideline here so that it's, you know, still visible, but maybe not getting in the way so much. And uh, my idea is to get a little hint of the shoulder back here, but I want to get the um, deltoid. <laughs> I always get confused. It's not the bicep. The tricep? <laughs> Somebody help me. I don't know these things by now. Let's consider this the uh, tip of the elbow. We'll come back here. And, uh, yeah, I think it must be the deltoid up there. Around the area of the shoulder. But uh, the bicep would be coming in, I think, right around here. But in order to draw that accurately, I feel like I kind of have to finish with his forearm. Because the forearm is closer to us. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll get the forearm in place. Give him sort of Popeye-style gigantic forearms. Notice there's kind of two, there's the straight area of his wrist, and then there's a big bulge here uh, around the upper forearm. Then I kind of know where I want the uh, bicep to be. I don't know about you, but I always get kind of confused about the, the musculature and the area where it joins. I've done videos on drawing the chest muscles, but that doesn't mean that I get it right every time. Far from it. So I'm coming down here. I guess I'm eventually going to be getting to drawing the chest, but let's, uh, for now, let's try to finish off the this hand here. Again, sort of cartoonishly large. And I'm going to begin by dividing it into the four fingers. I'm not going to concern myself too much with anatomical accuracy here, but uh, I often, when I draw these lines for the fingers, I often sort of tilt them up just at the edge to sort of suggest the flush there where it joins the uh, knuckle, the knuckular region. <laughs> How do you like that, my new word for the area of the knuckles? The knuckular region. Um, I'm erasing away here to sort of try to get this uh, hand looking better. 
And I'm going to also get in his thumb, just a little indication of the thumb over here. All right, how's that? Now it is time to get onto the other arm, and uh, I'll do the same sort of process. I'm going to lighten up the line here. And then begin to build on top of it. Uh, this time, just for fun, for variety's sake. I'm going to start over here and do the forearm first. Because I do tend to get a little lost in the uh, bicep, tricep, deltoid, <laughs> deltoidal region. <laughs> Everything's a region now. Um, but I'm doing this sort of, as I said, this sort of Popeye style forearm. <laughs> Please, Curly, don't do the, don't do the Popeye. Does the new generation even know Popeye? I don't know, man. I guess Popeye. Popeye is an undying character. So this would, I think this would be the tricep up here. And uh, here we would have an indication of the bicep. I'd, I'm overdue to do another uh, video on like arm and chest uh, musculature. Alright, so having got that in place, I suppose I should go ahead and finish off this hand. And you can, you know, when a hand is clenched into a fist like this, especially when you're doing cartoony style, you can get away with very little detail. Just some sense of that there's a thumb here and that there's, you know, the sort of contour of the edge of the knuckles. And now, before I draw the chest, I think I'll go ahead and just sort of get the basic contours of it in place. Heading down towards the the pelvis. And since I want this guy to look heroic, even though he's running for his life, <laughs> I'm giving him a gigantic upper body and then a, a rather slim lower body. Let's put in sort of an indication of his waist, um, sort of imagining a belt here. And then trying to get the classic superhero-esque contour of his chest. See how it sort of separates there into two areas? I'm going to get a straight line that comes right across here for his pecs. Always have to sound like Arnold when I say the word pecs. And, um, yeah, I'm not going to get too much into the details, but uh, hopefully that gives the, the basics of that. Maybe just a little line here for the uh, rib cage. The rib cage region. <laughs> Will you stop it with all these regions, Krilly? It wasn't funny the first time. All right, so we got that in place. I'm not 100% happy with the uh, anatomy up here, but we'll, we'll keep fiddling around with that. We'll fix it in post, as they say in Hollywood. Do they say that in Hollywood? Probably not. Now it's time to move down to the legs. I've got the sort of belt uh, in place, and I'm going to go ahead and... Um, I guess while keeping this here, the, the line of this, uh, the bent leg, I'm going to get the contours of the thigh. Let me know what you think of this approach of trying to do the entire um, line work part all in real time, all in a single go. It's been a while since I did this type of approach. I know that a lot of people hate time lapse. They want me to see it, or they want to see me draw the whole thing live. I do. I start to become aware of of how I'm, you know, rambling as I try to keep keep a sort of uh, instructional patter going. Um, again, very cartoony here. Uh, maybe make the the thigh a little wider. I'm thinking. But it is, you can see how that initial line told me where the end of the knee was. It is all sort of built on that initial guideline, even though the uh, uh, initial guideline was quite um, exaggerated, very simple, you know. But at least you've got something to build on. So I've got the lower leg is largely concealed by that thigh, so we don't have to draw so much of it. I'm imagining him wearing uh, some kind of boot. And I'll continue that down here. The sort of pants are maybe tucked into the boot a little bit. 
And here's where I'm going to get real exaggerated. I'm going to make his uh, ankle get quite small, you know, compared to this hand and so forth. It's sort of wildly out of proportion. I am trying to do a bit of a, um, <clears throat> a foreshortening thing. And <clears throat> drawing the uh, foot can be pretty tricky. I have always found, and I sort of borrowed this from superhero comics, that uh, when it's pointing toward you like this, you can kind of divide it into two parts. It almost looks like a horse's hoof, and then you go back here and you do just a little indication of the heel. Anyway, I've seen superhero artists do that for sort of dealing with this uh, the foot at this unusual angle. And there we go, guys. That is the basics of our character. Let's. Uh, I'm going to put a line across his bicep for him wearing some a, a form-fitting superheroic shirt. And having gabbed on and on and tried to do this entire thing in real time, I feel overdue for a bit of time lapse. So I'm going to call in old man time lapse, heroic old man time lapse. I'm here to save the day. And he is going to uh, help me get through the line work. I'm going to go ahead and do line work, this time using a brown colored pencil, which is uh, in keeping with uh, the, the drawing lesson, the artwork that I showed you earlier. All the line work was done with a brown, a trusty brown Prismacolor, instead of a trusty black Prismacolor. I'm going to go ahead and do all that in time lapse, and then we'll be back to do a little bit of coloring. All right, so I got all the line work done with my trusty brown Prismacolor. Sounds unusual to say that, but it did uh, serve me well as I was working on uh, the drawing lesson. Now I'm switching to watercolor, and I am going to be kind of sticking with uh, ochres and browns and so forth for uh, the entirety of this um, illustration, not just the guy who's running away, but also the monster next week. Um, it uh, creates a nice look sometimes uh, to limit your palette and not have uh, every color in the rainbow, but instead to um, maybe have one <laughs> color from the rainbow. In this case, it's going to be brown. Um, I've always been a big fan of brown and ochre, and that's why when I uh, had to decide, you know, with this book, I, I decided pretty er pretty early on to um, to make the drawing lesson have color, but only just one co color, or one or two colors. Uh, immediately I thought, yeah, it's got to be brown, ochre, these sort of warm uh, colors that I really enjoy using. In fact, my when people ask me, what's your favorite color? I very often say ochre, <laughs> which <laughs> makes me sound incredibly pretentious. Oh yes, ochre. <laughs> I simply cannot tolerate anything less than ochre. Um, but, uh, yeah, I do, uh, I like these warm colors that sometimes, you know, people are so into bright, uh, colors that I think these earthy brown colors uh, get overlooked and, and need to be celebrated. In any case, um, that is probably it for the real-time watercoloring. I am going to, uh, finish this all up, the watercolor, in time-lapse. And I might bring out a little bit of pastel, because that was certainly a big part of the artwork uh, in the drawing lesson. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so that takes care of the coloring, and uh, as I said, I wanted to use a little bit of pastel, which is uh, kind of an artist's chalk, I guess you could call it. Uh, certainly the type I use is uh, not the oil pastel, it's more of this chalky type. And rather than applying it directly, I'm actually just going to use my finger. Uh, look, some of it falling onto the... Uh, I'll make... I'll just... it's a happy little accident. Isn't that what Bob Ross always used to say? Um, I'm just adding this in here as a sort of a background for the um, the earth, I guess, the ground that he's running on. I, I'm, I'm not uh, planning to apply too much of it to him. 
Um, although I might try adding just a little. Let's see what happens. Whoa. Shouldn't have said just a little. <laughs> I jinxed myself. Uh, it can be a tricky mixing in uh, pastel with watercolor, especially if it's, if it's not completely dry. But uh, I think that not too bad. Helps sort of tie it together. But yeah, I may, mainly wanted to just use it here for the uh, the ground that he's running on. And that is bringing us toward the end of this video. Please do come back to watch uh, part two where I draw the monster. And I'm planning to have that monster right on top of him, you know. We're very close. Too close for comfort. Uh, and uh, feel free to leave your suggestions as to what you think the monster ought to look like. I do have a plan for what I want the monster to look like. But who knows? I'll read through the comments. Maybe be able to work in some of the suggestions that I see. Um, but for now, let me go ahead and grab my books. So that I can thank the kind people who have supported me by getting them, like Mickey Falls and Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel series. This is it, the collected edition, folks. It's out there, it's about. And the Realism Challenge, my book on hyper-realism, as well as Mastering Manga and Mastering Manga 2. And, as I said, the drawing lesson coming out on July 5th. I do greatly, greatly appreciate your support. I was going to add blushies, but I thought, you know what? We'll wait till next week. <laughs> give you an added incentive to tune in and watch me draw the monster. So let's go ahead and lay down this colored pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.